Welcome to AWS Tech Tips. Today's 10-minute demo is switching from tape to cloud backups. Our presenter is Peter Baldacides, Senior Product Manager at AWS. In this demo, we'll show you how to replace your physical tape environment with Storage Gateway in about 10 minutes. First, you'll want to go to the AWS console to select and download the appropriate Storage Gateway image, depending on the type of Storage Gateway and your hypervisor host. In this case, it'll be a tape gateway. Second step, you'll want to deploy that tape gateway appliance in your own environment. And you'll also want to provision some local disks. Each tape gateway requires a cache disk as well as an upload buffer. Fourth step is to activate your tape gateway appliance so that will associate your tape gateway with your AWS account ID. Fifth step is to create some virtual tapes and we can create those tapes at the click of a button again through the through the AWS console. Sixth step is to connect your tape gateway to your backup application and we do that via iSCSI and your backup application sees tape gateway as another media changer with some media drives. Seventh step is to import those new tapes into your backup application and again your backup application sees those as regular old tapes and then you can begin a backup job to one of those virtual tapes. Once that backup job is complete, you can choose to archive those tapes to Amazon Glacier for AWS's lowest storage cost. And then once you need to rest uh, restore from one of those tapes, you can retrieve those tapes to any of your gateways. So when you log on to um, Storage Gateway, you'll go to aws.amazon.com slash storage gateway. You'll be presented with this getting started page and you'll click the blue Get Started button. Then, you, again, you have those three flavors of storage gateway. You have file gateway, volume gateway, and tape gateway. Again, in this example, we'll click uh, tape gateway. Click Next, and then you select the host platform. Again, if you're deploying this on-premises, you, uh, you can click VMware or, or, or um, Hyper-V, and you can just click the button to download the image, and again, install that in that environment. In this example, what we'll do is we'll show you how to deploy it in EC2. We'll click EC2, and then we'll click Launch with AWS Marketplace. So we have Storage Gateway in the Marketplace. So that takes us to the Marketplace. <coughs> then what, the first thing you'll want to do is just select the region, and then click Continue. You can, click, you can use one click or use Manual Launch. I like to use Manual Launch because we have a few more um, options to select. Again, select the region that you want to deploy this in. And that takes us to EC2. We'll just confirm the EC2 instance type, which in this case, the default is the M4 extra large. Then we want to add storage. Every storage gateway has a local cache. Um, tape gateway also has an upload buffer. So we want to create those two disks. And again, whether you're deploying this on premises or in EC2, we want to, we want to add those two disks. And that's what we're doing here. The minimum recommended size of those disks is 150 gigabytes. So we'll add those two disks here. Then we'll configure the security groups. Again, we'll take the default here. Of course, you can, you can edit the, the, the default, the, the security groups as you, as you seem fit. But in this case, in this example, I'll just uh, accept the defaults. We'll click Launch. We'll select our key pair so that we can log on to this machine uh, later on if we need to. And then we'll click Launch Instance. So this is launching our Storage Gateway instance in EC2. There it is, that M4 Extra Large. We can see that it's running. And regardless of whether you're deploying Storage Gateway on-premises in a VM environment or in EC2, what we want to do is take note of the IP address. The IP address, we'll take that, we'll copy that, and we'll go back to the Storage Gateway uh, creation wizard, and we're going to plug in that IP address here. What this is going to do is it's going to associate my AWS account with that Storage Gateway. So we'll plug in the IP address here, and we'll click Connect to Gateway, and then we'll add a little bit of information about this gateway. We'll add the, the time zone. We'll give it a name. Every Storage Gateway deserves to have a name. So in this, we'll, we'll, we'll select reInvent here. 
And then we'll pick the backup application. Again, you can pick any one of these supported backup applications. I happen to be using Veeams. And what that will do is it will set the appropriate media changer type. We'll click Activate Gateway, and we're almost home. The gateway is now active. It's looking for those two disks that I just created for the cache and the upload buffer. And there they are, those 250 gigabyte disks. We'll assign one as the upload, upload buffer. We'll assign the other one as the cache. That other 10 gigabyte one is uh, the default EC2 instance. We'll click Save and Continue. All right, and there's our gateway. Just like that, we have a new gateway. It's running, and there's zero tapes. So let's go ahead and create some tapes. We'll click Create Tapes. We can select, again, at the click of a button, as I mentioned before, we'll create five tapes, and then we can select the capacity. Um, I happen to be using LTO4 tapes before, so I'll go ahead and create some tapes that are 800 gigabytes each, just like, eight, just like LTO4 tapes, but you can create tapes that are 1.5 terabytes or 2.5 terabytes each. And important to know, you're not paying for that capacity. You're only paying for what you write. So it really doesn't matter. It's, it's really more about maintaining your, the same backup workflows and policies that you had before. We'll give the, we'll give the tapes a barcode prefix. In this case, again, I'll sticking with the, with the reInvent theme. And we'll create some tapes. And just like that, we've created five tapes. They're creating, and now they're available. Okay. So we're done with that. We've created Storage Gateway. We've created some tapes. Let's go to our backup application. Again, it's Veeam. I launched the iSCSI properties. I'm going to plug in the same IP address here of my Storage Gateway, and that will connect that Storage Gateway with, with this machine. We'll see all the tape drives. Storage Gateway will present 10 tape drives, and we'll connect each one of those individually, and then click OK. Now, Storage Gateway is connected. Now I can go into Veeam in my backup application, and I can see under libraries, I see AWS Gateway VTL. So we're all connected here. So now what we can do is we can import those tapes. We'll click import those tapes. We'll just confirm that action, because that's what Veeam is asking us to do. We'll click on media. And there you go. We just imported those five tapes, and now we want to uh, inventory those tapes to get a little bit more information about those tapes. We'll right-click, click Inventory Library. Again, confirm that action. And now we should go, we should see on those tapes, we can see now those tapes, the 800 gigabyte capacity for each one of those tapes. All right, so now that we have those tapes, let's go ahead and kick off a backup. We'll click Tape Job, and we'll cl click a backup. And Veeam will ask us for a few things here. It'll ask us to name the backup, and again, sticking with that reInvent theme, we'll, we'll, give it a, we'll give it a name. We'll then select our backup files. I have a backup job that I created earlier. We'll click on that, we'll click OK. Again, we'll, we'll create a full backup. You can, you can choose whether you wanna do a full backup or incremental backups. There's a couple of options here, whether or not you wanna eject the tape after you're done or not. Every backup application is a little different here. Um, you can schedule the job, but what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna kick that off automatically. And we can see that backup job is running, almost done. Okay, success. The tape job, that, that tape backup job is done. And we can see now that, that, first, that drive one, the tape ending in 72, has now 700 gigabytes free. So we wrote approximately 100 gigabytes. So if you go back to Storage Gateway, let's click Refresh. We'll see that tape that ends in 72 has some data written to it, about, about 100 gigabytes. All right. Pretty easy, right? Let's go back now. Now we want to archive that tape. To archive a tape, you go to your backup application. We'll eject it from its tape drive, and then we'll export it. Some backup applications call it export. Some call it eject. In this case, it's a little bit of both. We'll export that tape. And then once, once Storage Gateway gets that iSCSI command to eject the tape or export the tape, 
we move that tape to Glacier. So again, you want, you, you're getting that lowest cost storage. So again, we'll, let me uh, click refresh here, and that tape will disappear. It, now it's in, it's in archive. So if I search for the reInvent uh, barcode prefix, there's that tape, and we can see that it's been archived. Once a tape has been archived, it's good. You can, you can leave it there forever, or you can retrieve it. You can click Actions, Retrieve, and now you can pick a, any gateway you want to retrieve that tape to. And that's what we were talking about before. So that tape now is in a retrieving status, and it'll take three to five hours for that tape to essentially thaw um, from, uh, from, from Glacier. Thank you for watching. Learn more at the link below.